It is now official. The Big 12 is expanding by four teams. This is what we all thought would happen with the recent loss of Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, it says here the Big 12 presidents and chancellors voted on Friday to accept BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF into the conference. In a statement, the Big 12 said the four schools were, quote, approved unanimously by the eight continuing members, end quote. And here is a quick visual graph at the uh, new Big 12 conference minus Texas and Oklahoma. Obviously, we know how big of a loss Texas and Oklahoma are in terms of football for this conference, and I think many people now are wondering, uh, you know, is this conference still a Power 5 uh, level conference with Texas and Oklahoma leaving? Oklahoma being a team since the college football playoff era started, they're a perennial top 4 or top 5 team in the nation. We know Texas's brand, we know how big it is, uh, they recruit really well, they have such a fertile base, losing those two teams is huge, but they did a really good job with these four additions, and I think you take a look at these interesting numbers that I found via Twitter. Take a look at this. One key measure for the new Big 12, how many top 25 teams can they have and have they had in the past with these four new schools? It says here's how many weeks these 12 spent in the AP poll from 2011 to 2020. The annual average puts them on par with the ACC and the reality of the situation, looking at this conference top to bottom, sure there's no Clemson, there's no superpower with the loss of Oklahoma, but this conference is definitely at least on par with the ACC. Guys, before the season started, I said the ACC was a horrific conference, a complete joke. Everyone now agrees with me after one week, you see Clemson lose, you see, you see uh, Miami get destroyed. Uh, North Carolina lose, who was the top 10 team. Everyone's like, oh, the ACC sucks. This conference, top to bottom, again, they're not going to have the powerhouse team, but top to bottom, this conference is at least on par with the ACC and the Pac-12 as well at this point. The Pac-12 is still waiting for USC to kind of rise to their perennial power. UCLA's had kind of a nice start to the year. We'll see where they end off. One of the other big questions is, can this conference field a playoff team? And number one, I think yes, because I also think the playoff will be expanding. I've said this numerous times. For the people who think the playoff should stay at four teams, once Oklahoma and Texas move to the SEC, it is simply not possible due to scheduling imbalance among the, the five main conferences. And what I mean by that, the SEC already is the best conference in college football. I agree with that. But it gets exponentially better. It gets ex exponentially harder. You're going to have schedules you know, in the SEC where you're facing Oklahoma, Alabama, Florida. The scheduling is going to be so much harder in the SEC. They're going to say, well, two or three lost teams should be in the four-team playoff over a one-loss Big Ten champ, over a one-loss Pac-12 champ. The scheduling difference makes it to where you have to at least expand the playoff to an eight-team format. And I think absolutely, uh, you take a look at the map, a map here, absolutely uh, with these teams, they could definitely in an eight-team playoff or especially a 12-team playoff, which is the playoff that I like, um, field the playoff team. The 12-team playoff, how it sets up is you're looking at the fourth, the first four teams get buys. Uh, so there's still kind of a very big incentive to finish be finishing in one of the top four spots. You'd have five, you know, the fifth seed face the number 12th seed. You'd have the sixth seed face the 11th seed, the seven, V10, the eight, V9. And then those, the winners of those would take on the top four seeds. I think that's the best model going forward for college football to where you still put an emphasis on getting one of those top four spots. Sure, it takes the exclusivity of the playoff out of the equation when you expand from four to 12. That's an expansion times three. Uh, so the exclusivity isn't there. You're going to have a lot of teams making the playoff. I understand that. But again, with Oklahoma and Texas, you have to at least expand it to eight. You know, I, these people want to keep it at, at four or expand it to six. It's just going to create the schedule indifference makes it to where the SEC, there's going to be teams in the SEC that have so much harder schedules than this new Big 12, than the, than the um, Pac-12 currently has. And they're going to say, well, a two or three loss Oklahoma should be in the playoff because they have a way harder schedule than a one loss Pac-12 champion. That's why the playoff needs to be expanded. Here are p potential Big 12 divisions. West Division, BYU, Texas Tech, TCU, Baylor, Oklahoma State, and Houston. And in the East, you've got Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State, Cincinnati, West Virginia, and UCF. I do believe UCF has staying power at this point. 
They do have a senior quarterback. We'll see how, they, how they're able to replace him. Uh, but UCF's been good for a while. Cincinnati has been good for a little while now. That East Division could be very good. Obviously, Kansas and Kansas State, not too good. West Virginia's kind of on and off. Iowa State is a big question mark to me. Are they able to keep Matt Campbell? Week one, they didn't look very good. They've got a big game this week against Iowa. This is a huge season for Iowa State's program with the expectations they have. Same thing with Cincinnati. Cincinnati has huge games coming up. Maybe, maybe not as big as you know the game once was with Indiana. Indiana after Indiana got destroyed week one, but uh, for a number of teams in this new in this new Big 12, a number of these teams, Cincinnati and Iowa State especially, this season is huge for them. Um, and then you talk about the basketball side of things, you're losing an Oklahoma team, their basketball program, it's iffy, they had Trey Young, they made the tournament, They're, it's a mediocre program, it's a middle of the pack Big 12, kind of lower end uh, basketball program, Texas they were kind of good, you know, last year. They were a three-seed of the tournament. They got upset round one. Shaka Smart was really a disappointment there. This conference in basketball, with the addition of these teams, is going to be a, a, a complete bloodbath. I mean, Baylor, we know how good they've been. Oklahoma State's always there. Uh, you know, th this conference, Houston, is it was really good last year. It is going to be a complete bloodbath in terms of the basketball side of things. And here's another key tweet. It says, BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF's first season in the Big 12 will be in 2023. That allows new members to play in conference two years with Oklahoma and Texas still there unless Oklahoma and Texas get out early to the SEC, which will happen. So the big question now becomes, these four teams are joining the Big 12 in 2023. That tells me that at the latest, Oklahoma and Texas will be members of the SEC in 2023. We've heard rumors of them potentially joining the SEC as early as next year. I think they want to get this thing as done as fast as possible. But obviously now with these members joining in 2023, it sets up the idea that Oklahoma and Texas are you know clearly in the uh, Big 12 this year, could also be in the Big 12 next year, and then you've got a seamless transit you know, transaction where those two teams leave and these four new ones, BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF come in. These are four really solid teams. A lot of, again, the thing is there's staying power with these teams. They're good all the time. And you can say, well, they didn't face very many, you know, great teams in their conferences before. That's kind of how they've had success. They, like to me, this conference is, it's pretty well balanced. Legitimately. Again, there's, there's no superpower, which hurts. But TCU is a good football program. Houston, they're having a bit of a down year this year, but they're normally a good football program. Cincinnati, currently a top 10 program. Iowa State, we'll see. They're currently a top 10 program. Oklahoma State has the potential to be good, uh, you know, certain years. West Virginia, we've seen them be good recently. Baylor, they've got some problems with, the, with their, you know, football program. They've been good with Art Bryles. We know that. Um, Matt Rule had a few nice years. Kansas State, you got to go all the way back to Kellen Klein on that one. Texas Tech, they really haven't been good recently at all. And then Kansas, who has obviously been terrible, uh, you know. But th there's a lot of good. This is a very balanced conference now. I'm really liking this Big 12. And the only argument to say, well, the ACC is better than it, the Pac-12 is better than it, is a team like Clemson, who's so much better than everyone else. But you look at the rest of the conference, Miami... You know, North Carolina at this point. The pro I've said this before. The problem with the ACC, when Florida State is down, and not, they, like they're, they've been really down. Like, I'm not talking fringe top 25. Like, they've been, you know, not making bowl, you know, bowl games down. They've been terrible. When Florida State is down, the ACC is a horrific conference. A horrific conference. And this year is no different. And that's why people are still picking Clemson to make the playoff. Even you look at how bad they looked in week one. They don't face anyone, you know, and it's like, you know, Virginia Tech, you know, it's like, I, maybe, maybe North Carolina. I'm, I certainly love Sam Howell, but they, he has no one else. Everyone left him on offense on, on that North Carolina team. We saw what happened week one. Uh, but guys, so the Big 12 Conference is set uh, once Oklahoma and Texas lead, leave. It's a very balanced conference. It definitely can produce playoff teams in an 8 or a 12 team playoff. I will say... If for some reason the playoff does remain at four teams, it would be interesting if one of these teams went undefeated. 
I mean, I would assume they would get in unless it was like, a, you know, crazy circumstances where a Big 12 team was undefeated, an SEC team was undefeated, you know, a, an ACC team was undefeated. Like it was crazy. I think if if someone went undefeated in a four team, they would probably get in. I mean, the, the strength of schedule in this conference is pretty good. Kansas is really the only team that is that would kill your strength of schedule. If you play one good out of conference game and then you play in this conference, you will have a good strength of schedule with at least, I would say, three three, probably top 25 wins. I mean, you know, these are good, you know, good football programs. They're solid programs and it's a really well-balanced conference. I like it a lot. And it's just definitely a step up for these teams like Cincinnati. You know, Cincinnati has been so good the past few years. This is such a great move for them. Take advantage of this, you know, take advantage of Oklahoma and Texas leaving. It's a step up. You know, you can say what you want about it. The American, it's a power six. I don't think it's that good. This is a, you know, this is a better conference than the American. It is going to be, they're going to get more TV revenue. They're going to get more eyeballs. They're going to get more ratings. Really good move for these four teams. BYU normally is pretty good. Uh, UCF obviously has been very good recently. And then Houston, who's had, you know, kind of having a down year this year, but they've been good as well. Guys, that is going to do it for this video on the Big 12 expansion. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.